Good morning, travelers. Tara here, Hidden Lotus Tarot, and I'm coming to you with the open reading number five. Uh, today is October. October. That's because my calendar, I still have not changed my calendar. November 5th, 2016. Um, welcome, new subscribers. Uh, steady subscribers, thank you for sticking around. Um, please share and like. Uh, the videos. If the messages help you, they may help someone in your life uh, that needs a little bit of. Hang on one second. I, I, I want. I, I don't have one of my decks out. Um, I'm coming to you today with the um, Hermetic Tarot. Uh, I had very very strange dreams last night, and it's worth noting because I normally don't have any dream recall. I know I dream. I just don't have any dream recall. Um, you know, people tell you to. Um, keep a dream journal by your bed. Well, the moment I like wake up, first of all, I can't see because I don't have my glasses on. And so I can't see to write down whatever it is that the impressions that I get. Um, and by the time I get my glasses on and kind of wake up, I've, you know, I've lost whatever was there. Uh, however, sometimes um, I am able to remember. And so I don't, I just know that it was a very, very strange dream um, that I had. Um, and so I kind of got up and I wanted to see if it, what was happening. Um, my runes have been telling me a very, very strange story. I keep getting the blank room, the weird room. I don't know. Um, that is the all or nothing room. Uh, it's like uh, the zero. It is everything and nothing. But it portends a huge uh, change. But it is unknowable, the change. It's unknowable how, when, why, what for, um, and in what direction it's going to take you in. So I, I got up. It's kind of been scaring me, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I got up because sometimes that rune will mean, uh, depending on what rune it falls with, can tell you that you know you, you shouldn't be actually looking or trying to find out whatever it is. Um, it's tempting fate. But anyway, I got up and I put down a spread. So you guys know that I always like to deal the cards in front of you so that you can actually see that those are the cards that came out. But when I laid this particular spread, um, and really it was a search to try to figure out what what my dream was trying to tell me. Now I do feel, in some respect, we, we know that Neptune has been retrograde since June something, and ideally, uh, when Neptune goes retrograde, <clears throat> it should be able to put you in touch with your intuition. So some of you who are sensitives may have been having um, lots of signs, lots of synchronicities, dreams. Um, the same song playing over and over again, uh, the same word or something being repeated. Uh, if you if you know you're watching TV, you'll hear, you know, something that keeps being repeated. Um, <clears throat> you might be seeing a series of numbers that keep you know revealing themselves to you, and maybe this has caused a lot of confusion. You don't know. So ideally, that is what should happen. However, the um, contradiction in that is that it creates a lot of confusion. You're, you're not exactly sure why you're saying, why you're having, why you're feeling, why you're sensing, what your dreams mean. So it creates a lot of confusion. Now, um, Neptune will be stationing or will be going direct on November 19th. Please keep in mind, people, that I am not an astrologer. I'm not certified in it. It's something that I dabble in. Um, for me, it, it actually brings a whole nother level to the tarot. Um, and um, I'll put up a link for a website where you can go. They do not pay me. They have not paid me. Um, that you can go and enter in your birth information and get your own free chart. And this is good because uh, you can um, kind of see where your planets sit on what house. Now, this is something you'll have to do for yourself. Um some of you may not be able to grasp the concept of astrology, and that's okay. Um, you know, for me, 
the astrology, astrology with the tarot has really opened up a whole bunch of, um, it's like the veil has really been lifted for me. And I have to thank, um, oh, what is her name? She's got a channel on YouTube. Um, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It'll come to me later. I bought one of her little $10 courses. Uh, it's a $10 course in understanding the transit. And that really like completely opened up a whole new world for me. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. I, I, I'll get it in a minute. Um, Pam Gregory, that's her name. Pam Gregory, and she's here. She's a British astrologer. Um, <clears throat> I tend to find British astrologers are a little bit, they really know their shit. That doesn't mean that American astrologers don't know their shit. They really know their shit. I, I you know, there's three or four of them. British astrologers that I routinely uh, listen to, read their stuff, any articles, books that they have. Somebody else who's good, though, is Jan Spiller, and she does a lot of past life astrology work. She's got some great books out there. Um, okay, so anyway, <clears throat> the nine cards, this is what the spread, how the spread presented itself to me. The nine cards are the moon. Okay, the Nine of Swords, the Knight of Cups, the Hanged Man, the Empress, the Blasted Tower, that is the name of the card, the Blasted Tower. Here I have the Lord of Illusionary Success or the Seven of Cups. Here I have the Lord of the Forces of Life, otherwise known as the Wheel of Fortune. Here I have the Lord of Earthly Powers or the Four of Pentacles. And it ends with the Lord of Great Strength, otherwise known as the Nine of Wands. Now, this is going to play out uh, in several different ways. I, I was looking at it sitting down and then when I stood up a whole nother story emerged. The messages will not apply to everyone so please try to take what you can from it and disregard what you cannot. Okay. Um, right in the center I have the Empress. This is Venus. Uh, Venus rules the beauty, the women, the love, the income, Venus uh, rules the second house, self-possessions, the money that you earn yourself, um, those things that you have uh, purchased, you own, and you paid for yourself. Um, it also rules self-esteem and values, okay? Your own personal values. Uh, it also represents self-empowerment. Um, this is our focus. Now, sometimes what will happen through Venus transits is Venus wants you to, you know, she likes the luxuries in life and she wants, you know, she's the sensual uh, planet and she wants you to have the best of everything. So for some of you, uh, you may have gotten into a relationship or you have met someone um, or you've been spending your money on things to make you feel good. OK, that's what Venus does. But sometimes what can happen is after the Venus transit, you're looking at the person going, what in the hell was I thinking? Or why did I even buy this? You know, it's not something you end up using. It's kind of like buyer's remorse. Okay. Now in this deck, the Hermetic Tarot. Oh, by the way, I have one, two, three, four, five major arcana out of nine. Five out of nine. So it's more heavily weighted towards lessons. Okay, life lessons, spiritual lessons, and the integration of them or not. Okay, and then I have, you know, I only have um, two numbered cards in the spread itself. Uh, this is the Seven of Cups and the Four of Pentacles. Now, to me, this is representative of the Twelfth House, and I agree with that because here is the Wheel of Fortune. The Twelfth House, no matter what your astrological sign is, is the house of the subconscious. 
Uh, it is the karmic house. It is the house of self undoing. How do you um, self sabotage yourself? What types of fears do you have? Um, where are you sacrificing your power to others? Um, where are you um, ignoring your uh, the power in terms of self empowerment? It is the house of fears. So this tells me that some of you, particularly those of you who are psychic um, or have sensitivities, and some of you do have them. And, you know, this may be, this is ruled by Jupiter. Okay. Um, the wheel of fortune. So for some of you, this could actually be Jupiter in your 12th house. Um, and Jupiter works very, very subtly. This would be on somebody's rising sign. And Jupiter works very subtly in the 12th house. Um, it does bring about... Uh, gifts and luck, expansion and abundance. And here I do have that with the um, Empress here. That's what she represents. Um, but at the same time in the seventh house, what it does is it brings up things from your subconscious so that you can heal them and move forward once Jupiter moves into your first house. Now, I would take it that there might be a lot of Scorpio people going through this right now because they have a lot of Libra factors. In other words, they have Libra rising, okay? Or they may have a Libra moon or something of that nature. And so um, you're being asked to, no matter what your sign is, if you have a Jupiter transiting through your 12th house, that's going to be your rising sign. And it will bring about things that have been holding you back for many, many, many years. Only you have to be receptive to the information that's coming in. Um, and you have to trust, even though it may seem like it, it, you know, it's not true or it's just so weird and so out of the ordinary that you can't, it can't possibly be real. You have to trust that it is. Jupiter's here to give you a gift. And the gift, in a sense, is sort of like um, a release. It's a freedom. Okay. The epiphany coming in. Now, I, I don't feel that these three major arcana across the center are any mistake. So let me get down to it. Um, here I have the moon, the hanged man, and the seven of cups. Now, the moon in this deck simply speaks to deception. Okay. And here I have the hanged man. And we know that the hanged man is represented by Neptune. And Neptune... Uh, is asking you to suspend something, to suspend your actions, to suspend your judgment, to suspend your thoughts, your beliefs, your emotions. Why? So that you can really try to get in touch with the reality of what it is. Now, keep in mind that my reality is going to be different from your reality, but it nevertheless does not make it any more real. Okay. Um, reality is simply a perception. And so the hanged man comes in just the message of the card to ask you to view this from a different perspective. Okay. And what we're dealing with is someone or perhaps feeling that uh, no matter what I do, I just don't feel satisfied. That's that seven of cups energy. Okay. Um, it could also be, I, I think this, I was looking at this card last night. Let me, let me, because there's another interpretation of it. It's this fantasy, wishful thinking, deception at the moment of apparent victory, a neutralized victory, illusionary success, lying, promises unfulfilled, drunkenness, violence against women, selfish dissipation, deception in love and friendship, success often gained but not followed up on. So in other words, it's like maybe you've had an opportunity to have some things come in, but then right at the moment you get it, you obtain it, and all of a sudden it doesn't, there's no satisfaction in it. Or you get right to that point where you're about to achieve something and then you back away from it. Okay. It could also be uh, lying to other people to get what you want, but you know that that's empty and vapid and vain. Okay, it really serves no purpose. That's why the wheel has come out to say, you know, what comes around goes around. It could also be other people lying to you and you're trying to get a handle on that. You don't understand why they're doing it. You don't understand what they have to gain. What they have to gain is something that makes them feel good. 
okay? It makes them feel good to do that. Again, though, what comes around goes around. Um, but it, uh, now this represents Venus and Scorpio. And Venus and Scorpio wants to get, it's, it's a very difficult placement for Venus to be in. Because Venus and Scorpio is that kind of uh, love till death do you part kind of a thing. So <coughs> it's not just about, excuse me, <coughs> oh, excuse me, romantic love, but it's about those things that you really hold very, very close and very, very dear. Uh, these may be things that you've never said to anybody. So this is the deep placement of, of wanting what you want, how you want it, the way you want it, when you want it. Okay, and this can breed um, sometimes obsessive behavior, vengeful behavior. Uh, it can create situations where um, it's all about having your own desires um, fulfilled. Uh, it can create um, control issues because you're trying to control somebody through perhaps sex or emotions or even mental domination. Um, but this speaks to someone who who doesn't really have their own power, so they try to take it from other, from from uh, they try to take it from others, okay, or from certain situations to feel empowered. Remember, we're talking about self empowerment here. Now, I feel that at the moment we have this could go back to the eclipse. The last eclipse of uh, on September 16th, but it can also speak to the new moon in Scorpio, okay? And if I look in this direction diagonally here, it can be speaking to the new moon in Taurus coming up. Now, even though this represents Capricorn, this four of coins, we can just simply look at it as being a uh, earth sign. And we do have that transit coming up on the 14th. Now... <clears throat> Uh, when I stood up from uh, to walk away from the spread, something jumped out at me that was quite uh, surprising. This diagonal line of the moon, the empress, and the four of coins. To me, this speaks to the moon in the fourth house. Okay? We know that the fours are all about um, stability. Um, so the moon in the fourth house is ruled by cancer. There you have it. And this rules the home life, the childhood, and the mother. Okay. So perhaps for some of you, uh, there has been a challenge with, if not your mother, then someone who has a very, very strong feminine identity and feeling that there is some deception around this. Okay. Um, now, who doesn't have issues with their parents? Really? Um, you know, that beaver cleaver thing that we grew up, some of you are too young to even remember that, but <laughs> the beaver cleaver thing that we grew up believing how families were was simply that it was an illusion. Um, uh, even though you may have had a quote unquote normal childhood, well, normal is a perception, is it not? Um, what may be normal to you may not be normal to me. Again, so it's a perception. We do have those societal norms. We all know that we're supposed to behave a certain way. We're supposed to speak a certain way. We're supposed to treat people a certain way. We're expected to do X, Y, and Z. Um, so those are the societal norms, okay? But because each person is individual, we don't always fit into those little boxes, okay? A lot of times when I see this kind of combination, um, it kind of speaks to there's a secret within the family, some kind of secret. Um, one that it's, it may not be anything like bad. It could be maybe somebody in the family was an alcoholic or somebody had issues with money and they weren't able to keep the family stable. Um, it could be that... Um, Whenever I see this combination of the moon, the empress, and the four of pentacles, what it speaks to is that the the mother was extremely important in, in the home life and the raising of the child for good or for bad. And it could also be that the mom, in some respect, uh, was a little bit more standoffish, 
okay? I'm more on a mental plane than she was on an emotional plane, okay? Um, I do feel that when Neptune goes direct, if any of you are struggling with this and trying to, and some of you, it may be so deep-seated, you don't even recognize it. Um, if things have been coming up about your childhood dreams, you're having remembrances, um, if your mom is playing uh, heavily into it, it could be even that perhaps maybe your mom might be ill at this time. I do have someone hanging upside down here. Um, and that you have now you're in a position where you have to take care of them, but it might be bringing up some kind of resentment. That would go back to perhaps the way that you felt growing up around your mom. I don't want to get too deep into this, but I do feel that this will be changing. And if you've been having some issues with that, maybe some of this stuff has been coming up because as we can see here, the tower liberates you from the energy of this hanged man. Okay. So some of you may be, may be able to heal the rift that you have with a mother, a mother figure. Um, it could also be that some of you have met someone uh, in a romantic sense that kind of reminds you of their mom, <laughs> of your mom. Okay. And this has created a lot of confusion for you. Some ambivalence, perhaps. Um, just in general, across the top row, the moon, the nine of swords with the nine of cups. This speaks to, if we're just going to take it on face value, the meaning of the card with the moon, which is deception. Some kind of deception has come in. Now, is it deception from others or is it deception from yourself? Something that's coming up. We see the nine of swords and this is speaking to the fears or the worry. Somebody who is kind of obsessing over what the situation is or why they feel the way that they do. Um, this could be... Um, bringing up a lot of emotions for you, ones that you don't feel comfortable with. You want to push those away. That's why we have the hangman. You're trying not to, to deal with those um, because you're saying it doesn't make any sense. Um, but it could also be this Knight of Cups. Uh, if some of you have not met a person, then you may be meeting a person who has a lot of Neptunian qualities coming in okay and what this means is this is someone who's going to come in there will be no boundaries uh, it's you won't know where they begin and where you end your emotions may be all over the place they may push buttons and you don't understand what buttons and why and how they're pushing them but you're being asked to remember that they're really not pushing the buttons it's really they're saying something to help bring up some things for you an opportunity to clear here some things perhaps related to your past uh, re love relationships family relationships um, what your idea of really what makes you feel good what do you need emotionally I think this is what you're being asked um, and a lot of times we think we know what we we need emotionally we, we or we have been saying for so long, you know, this is what I know I need, you know, but what we don't realize sometimes is that as we uh, go through life, we get older, we change our experiences, shape us. What we need tends to become a little bit different and, you know, trying to stay stuck in what you needed 20 years ago doesn't work for what you need now. Um, and so I think you're being asked to get in touch with that now. In looking at the road down the center, the Nine of Swords with the Empress and the Wheel of Fortune, I do feel that if this is a situation dealing with your mom or a, a strong feminine figure, it could even just be issues with women, okay? Because um, it kind of reads like a, Neptune, a, a Venus retrograde. <clears throat> um, it's right in the center here. And... And people who have a natal Venus retrograde have a very, very, very difficult time believing that people love them. They feel unworthy of love. Uh, they will go out of their way to, um, typically these are the people that will buy things to show their love instead of telling you how they feel. 
They have a very, very difficult time uh, expressing their emotions, but it comes out of a deep-seated fear that they're going to be taken advantage of, uh, and they really feel that they're not worthy. So sometimes to compensate for that, they will give wholeheartedly uh, to someone or a cause or whatever, uh, but they're, and then when people try to give them love back, they push it away um, because deep down they feel that they don't deserve what that is. And this kind of reads like a, a, a Neptune retrograde here. I mean, a Ver, uh, Venus retrograde down the center. But I do feel that because this speaks to fears, this nine of swords, and I do feel that that is about to change. There's There's going to be a change. Now, I'm not going to say you're going to wake up one day and everything's going to be roses and sunshine, you know, champagne and strawberries and all of that. Um, this is going to be, I think, painful. I think it will be scary. I think it will, um, it is really asking you to take a deep, deep look at uh, those things that have held you back. And that's kind of what, what I'm looking at. Now, this speaks to the past, okay? And what we're going through presently here is I feel that for some of you, you've been kind of waiting around. And here's this empress, this Venus about the love. What are you waiting for? Well, you don't quite know what you're waiting for. That's what that says. <clears throat> and and you may be even afraid to move forward because in the past there have been hurts and deceptions and deceit and lying and trickery and, you know, things. Um, but the tower is coming through, the energy of the tower is coming through to kind of clear the air for you so that you can come down off of the cross now and take advantage of this uh, energy of the empress. This is abundance coming in. Well, what is abundance? Well, we know maybe for some of you, you've been working really hard. You got a lot of nice stuff, you know, but you still find that there's something missing. For others of you, you may find um, that you're in a relationship now and you feel as though you've grown apart. Why? Because um, your needs have changed. So I do feel that some of you will be getting that sudden realization here uh, about where you want to go. The energy is going to change and you're going to be able to move forward. Now, <clears throat> this is the future column for some of you. This is the heralding of someone new coming in for you. Uh, this is the Uranus energy and it's Mars energy. So this could be somebody who comes in quite suddenly. There is a quick, hard, fast attraction. Lots of sexual uh, chemistry here. Mars energy. <clears throat> But it kind of reads like it's not going to develop any further. This is a four. This is a four. So this could be one of those, I don't want to say flash in the pan kind of relationships. It's going to be something that will burn really hot, really quick, and then it's going to kind of die down. Okay. And maybe that's why we have that nine of wands over there. Um, but this also speaks to me about the transit we have, uh, I think, Mars in Capricorn, and Mars went into Capricorn in on September 6th, I'm um, sorry, September 26th. Now, Mars in Capricorn, let me read to you what it's all about. Mars will be leaving Capricorn on November 9th, so in a few days here. Um, <clears throat> I thought this was really, really good. Um, so let me read to you. It says, we spent most of 2016 with Mars wavering between Sat Scorpio and Sagittarius due to a retrograde cycle that lasted for over two months. Despite Scorpio being Mars's nocturnal domicile, which means that the planet of assertiveness and passion is especially powered up in the sign, our experience of his yang energy has been vastly contemplative and more meandering than usual so far. Our energy levels have been subjected to climactic fluctuations. While the standard process of reassessment and reevaluation that accompanies the planetary retrogrades has prompted us to sit back and scrutinize our assertive impulses rather than overtly expressing them. Remember I said you've been kind of um, suspending things. 
That being said, Mars uh, entering Capricorn on September 27th made for a momentous shift, marking a discernible turning point in the year's narrative, especially for the more Marsy types who have lamented a loss of stamina and vitality through the past five months. Remember I said it's like some maybe somebody's been sick? And they haven't been able to figure out what really is going on with them. They may think it's something physical when actually it's something more spiritual or uh, emotional that is causing uh, this, you know, not feeling like yourself. Authoritative Capricorn is the sign of Mars's exaltation. In other words, the warrior planet turns from a rabid fighter to a disciplined soldier. Mars in the Saturnine sign of rectitude, control, and ambitious is focused, deliberate fire. His raw power is harnessed and directed through Capricorn's methodical, structured design. In other words, he knows what he wants and how to get it. <clears throat> At this point, there might be plans, things or plans or projects that we have put off, if not given up altogether. <coughs> Excuse me. We might feel too skeptical or wary to invest more energy in something that once thrilled us and motivated us. Remember I was saying this whole line reads like, you know, you got something and then it just wasn't what you thought it was, or you got right up to the point of completion and then you just weren't able to follow through with it. Well, that's the Mars and Capricorn. Okay. Um, with Mars entering Capricorn, this is bound to change dramatically as we discover the gratification and feeling of self-empowerment and climbing our personal mountain and earning the rewards and recognition we deserve while we enjoy the view from the top. There's the Wheel of Fortune. Okay. A powerhouse transit, which brings the potential to work towards our long-term plans and capitalize on our aspirations, whether it's about business, career, or whatever else constitutes our definition of achievement. You see, some of you may be looking for achievement financially um, in, in the material sense. Some of you may be looking for some kind of achievement in a spiritual, emotional sense. Some of you may be trying to reach an achievement with your family members or your children, or some of you may have personal goals that you're trying to um, get through. It says, take this combination of pragmatic commonsensical cleverness and drive for significance. Add commitment, accountability, and doable realistic goals, and you'll have a profitable recipe for success. Mars will leave Capricorn for Aquarius on November 9th. Now, Aquarius is all about that freedom-loving sign. So I think this for a lot of you, you're going to all of a sudden just kind of take off. This nine of wands is called the Lord of Great Strength. This is getting your mojo back. Okay. However, we know that there's a danger in that. So let me take a look at the nine of wands here and what the meaning of the card is. And then we're going to pull a few Sabilas because I do feel for some of you, this has brought a transit, someone through um, on a transit for you. And that person has kind of pushed your buttons and confused you. But believe, trust that, well, not trust, understand that it was supposed to happen that way. Knight of Cups, the hanged man with the Four of Pentacles. And I do feel that for some of you, this, this kind of speaks to me that it's not quite over yet. Now, whether or not you're with that person physically or not, um, I don't think really matters. Um, I think there is a definite um, psychic connection here um, with this Knight of Cups and the Moon and the Hangman. Okay, the Nine of Wands. It says tremendous power, unshakable force, Herculean strength, great success, strife and energy, victory preceded by apprehension and fear. Okay. Remember I was saying there's some fearful things here. 
and that's why you weren't able to perhaps complete things or you've been you've been on the incorrect course well now Neptune coming out of retrograde it's going to actually remove the fog so that you can kind of get back on track and Mars leaving Capricorn and going into Aquarius that's an air sign so it's like all of a sudden you're going to be able to whatever plans and whatever area that you've had that have been put on hold you're now going to be able um, for those of you who have done the work which is looking at where it is you want to go who do you want to take with you in this 2017 okay what do you want to take with you into 2017 uh, how are you going to accomplish that what are the things you're going to have to leave behind <clears throat> what are the things you're going to have to pick up and do differently in order to get where you want to go so ideally this is what you should have been uh, focused on uh, during this transit from September 26 or 27 when Mars entered Capricorn and will now be leaving so we've had September October November we've had roughly two and a half months where these are some of the things ideally that you should have been focused on now I know that some people have not been focused on that so this may not apply to you um nevertheless I don't think if you're if you're listening to this reading you might be able to move forward and kind of maybe make up for lost ground should you need um, it says health and good recovery uh, intractable but also fun fond of external appearances now remember I was saying this may bring somebody to you quite suddenly out of the blue but it kind of fizzles out it looks good to you it's beautiful it's pretty you got your mojo back you're gonna go after that thing we're gonna take a look at that um, for some of you this deception will suddenly be revealed to you and you're gonna be left wondering why or what the hell happened why would somebody do that to me why um, I don't understand let me give you the interpretation of the seven of cups I think I read it already did I not uh, I will read it again what I don't have I only have one court card here so this is either dealing with one person or it's dealing with an event and in a way to me it speaks to both um, typically you this Empress can be read as an energy in one respect that is true but I also feel that it represents um, some female of some sort um, I'm also going to say here that if you've been getting um, a funny feeling about a female that has come in a new female who may have entered into your life or on the scene do be cautious um, I have that moon card there attached to this Empress maybe you should wait a little while before you um, you know if this is about money some kind of business aspect maybe you should wait a little bit um, before you fork over the money or sign the contract or accept their advice um, because I think they have kind of like an ulterior motive for why they're doing what they're doing the tower with the seven of cups here um, And I think that maybe some of you have already picked up on this. It's the Wheel of Fortune. And some of you haven't made a decision yet about what you're going to do. You know, if you if it's something that you have to do, if it's already in the works, um, you know.
it, it this wheel of fortune kind of reads like it it can it can go either way but i think ultimately um it, it won't be so bad okay that four of pentacles here and i'm going to look at that card because that's our exiting energy of the spread it starts with some type of deception here um this could even be you know some people got them kind of moms uh, that have been deceiving them, you know, and I, I, I can remember uh, a spread where I was saying it's like some family member maybe telling you that they're sick and they need you and you've been bending over backwards. And then all of a sudden you find out that they're not, you know, they've been manipulating you for whatever reason. Um, this could even be a partner or an ex-partner um, because I, I can't ignore the fact that this Knight of Cups is riding back into the picture. For some of you, it's like the thing that you feared the most. <laughs> yeah, you know, but the moon with the nine of swords also tells me that it's something perhaps that you've been deep down subconsciously hoping or wishing would happen. Maybe you feared it wouldn't happen, but now that the person is back, now you're scared that they're back. Um, yeah, this could read, you know, this could, this, this is a really interesting spread to me. I say this to y'all all the time, but the cards really um in this deck for me um speaks in a completely different manner um you know and in a this is what i'm getting with this empress if this is an issue dealing with a a, a feminine figure someone has a strong you know she's got the phoenix sitting at the base her feet are on top of a bird that should be flying high, something that is able to rise from the ashes. So this could literally be some kind of female figure or female energy that's blocking you from doing what it is that you need to do. And maybe you have been, you know this deep down, but you, you didn't want to face it. Well, I think perhaps something's going to occur that's going to show you the, the light, the truth of that. Um... Because she, the 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 phoenix, is a nod to the emperor coming in, <clears throat> and the reason why the empress comes before the emperor in the tarot, we look at the magician as being Adam, and we look at the high priestess as being Eve. Now, separately, they represent simply the masculine and the feminine, the man alone and the woman alone. But then, once they come together, they merge their two energies. Then they create a third thing. So this brings the power of the empress up first because she's able to bring life and, and have children, okay? She comes first. And then once the child or the new thing is birthed, what we need now is that father figure or that authority figure or that mentor figure to help us with this third thing. So that's how, how those cards line up. Um... I want to take a look at this Seven of Cups, what this is telling me here, because uh, it sits in a very, very pivotal position here in the corner. It is the last card down on the past vertical column, the first card on the future row. And this just may be that some of you just decide to cast your lots to the wind, <laughs> you know? And see what happens. Um, I don't know why I just got Vegas. Are some of you going traveling? I don't see any travel here. Oh, there's that. Like somebody's gambling, maybe, taking a risk. Uh, Atlantic City, places where, places where you gamble. Uh, Vegas, uh, Monte Carlo. Should you be so lucky? Um, <laughs> um, there's a lot of Mars energy here. 
uh, the tower card itself just, you know, it screams. And you know what? This nine of wands represents Sagittarius. Wasn't I telling you a while back? Yeah, that's why I'm picking up Las Vegas. Some of you may be traveling to Las Vegas. Um, Sagittarian rules people at a distance, places, travel, foreigners. Um, you could be uh, uh, going to Atlantic City. Uh, I keep picking up Vegas. I don't know if that means anything for anybody, but that's... <clears throat> It's just these two cards that say that. I don't know what else they're trying to tell me about it. Um, that just kind of leaped out at me. Ah, yeah. Here, the world card, uh, the wheel of fortune. It, it, I don't know why I said the world. Some of you may be planning a trip, maybe abroad, overseas. Maybe you're going for business. Maybe some of you will meet someone overseas that really sparks your fire. But in a sense, it reads like it's going to be rather short-lived. It's going to kind of fizzle out um, because you're supposed to be focused on whatever this Nine of Wands is. So let's take a look and see if the Sabilis can kind of give us... Uh, with the Wheel of Fortune. This could be a sudden unexpected windfall for some of you in some way, shape, or form. I mean, it literally could be some of you may, you know, have lottery winnings. Um, something unexpected, though. It's an unexpected windfall. In some way, shape, or form. In which case, be careful who you share that information with because you may have people coming out of the woodwork to deceive you about it. Take your money. Use you in some way. Um, another thing that I'm picking up here with these three cards is that if this is a sudden windfall, it's kind of going to right whatever has been torn down because we, we gain a stability through that. So this could be someone who's really been struggling with their finances in some way, shape or form. And, you know, they've been looking for, you know, wondering if because nothing they've been doing is working. And then suddenly something coming through. Um, that brings a fresh infusion of perhaps cash or uh, a fresh energy in order for you to write what has been failing here. Um, and this gives you your mojo back. Now I can go ahead with those plans. I couldn't do it before because I didn't have the money or I've been struggling or business has been slow or uh, my clients, I don't know, my clients haven't been coming through for me. Um, but then something out of the blue, you know, and this could even be like a message from a friend. Uh, this is the Knight of Cups. Um, but we also know that the Knight of Cups doesn't have follow through all the time. So maybe this person brings you a tip or tells you something or puts you in touch with someone. Um, and that sets off a chain of events. Um, again, though, be cautious with what the person's telling you. 
because they may have some other kind of motivation behind it. Um, but if you've been accruing good energy, good karma, you know, not squashing any any ants, um, helping old ladies across the street. Um, even if this is a situation, like I said, like you find out somebody's been lying to you about they've been sick or, and, and you know, you've been bending over backwards, you find out, you know, even though that's a crappy, crappy situation, know that um, in a sense, it kind of reads like you're going to be rewarded for it. All right, let me, I don't know how long this is. I'm running into 50 minutes, so, and I've got work to do. Um, also, the moon, the blasted tower, and the seven of cups. Remember I was talking about that obsessive? You're going to be shown that. You're going to be shown that that, whatever this obsession is that you've had, uh, it comes from the fact that you were deceived about something and it's like something you can't get past. Um, and you're going to be freed from that. The will has come to say that's enough of that now. It's going to bring you to, I feel, a place of uh, peace and serenity in some way, shape, or form. If nothing else, it's going to... Um, get you out of this space. All right, here we go. Pensiero, pensiero, thought. Why can I not, why do I not feel joy? That's what I'm getting. I don't understand why I don't feel like anything is fulfilling to me. <clears throat> Militare, being caught in that. Um, but also, let me put the third card down. Look at here. But it also speaks to someone stealing and someone can't, not being able to get out of that space. Uh, see, that's a relationship with the police. Here are the presents and the gifts. Now, this could literally be some kind of, you know, embezzlement, uh, someone literally stealing something from your home. Um, this could be someone uh, that has stolen your emotions. You gave to them, you know, everything that you had to give. You gave it in um, the manner from a pure space and they abused that. They took advantage of it uh, because gifts can be anything. Um, depends on how you look at it. That's what Venus comes in. That's what the hangman says. You know, look at what look at what is really a value. What do you have that's a value? What is that? You know? Um, you know, but then what's more painful? Someone that you love and trust actually stealing jewelry or money or, you know, ripping off your bank cards or your bank account or what have you, or the fact that you trusted that person and never in a million years thought that they would do something like that to you. So you got to have to look at those two things separately and those two things together. What was it about that person that attracted you to them that made you want to do those things that you did? What was that? Why was that? How come I didn't see it? Well, the person is there to teach you something. That's why it happened. You weren't supposed to see it. <clears throat> You're not supposed to know everything ahead of time. This Empress. She's got the, the 12, she's got the zodiac signs. The 12 pentacles represent the 12 zodiac signs above her head. 
a whole year, a whole year, a whole year. This has been a struggle a whole year. Not having clarity for an entire year around your own personal values, your own self-worth, people that you've been involved with, projects that you've been involved with, money. How do you equate uh, your self-worth with the money that you have or you don't have? How you be, uh, allow people to treat you, um, how you've treated yourself. Let me, um, the only other card that I want to look at, and then I'm going to pull an angel answer card, is this nine of wands. Now this may harken back to the Mars and Sagittarius. That energy all of a sudden it's liberated fire on fire. Uh, the Sagittarius is the with Mars that's a spiritual warrior. In other words, it's somebody who's not going to allow, eventually will come to a place and not allow all of that garbage from the past to stop them on their quest. And I feel that the quest is about understanding a higher love. Uh, Neptune is the higher octave of Venus. Venus rules the earthly love, on the love on the earthly plane love of the sensual things, love of the tangible things. Um, there's going to be some kind of breakthrough surrounding that here with the tower. It's a liberating energy. Some of you may resist that. You may be afraid of that energy. If you can be bold if you can summon up your courage to sit with it, no matter how uncomfortable it is, recognize it for what it is. It's just a fear. Um, and fears can be very scary. But they're just thoughts, perceptions, beliefs, ideas. It's not permanent. It's not based in one respect in reality. All right. Last four, I mean, last three here on this uh, Nine of Wands. And it almost reads like when the wheel starts to turn, it's not. Uh, it, 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 it's a rebalance. That's the four. And these four coins here, to me, represent the four coins here or the stations of the cross. Um, we have the stations of the cross. Even here with the Egyptian Ankh. Even in the sacred geometry, this is a triangle that his leg makes. There's a triangle at the base. Um, sometimes your world has to be turned upside down. Um, you have to go through trials and tribulations in order to gain the real clarity that you need. Suffering, it is the, it is the cycle of rebirth, death, suffering. Uh, the four stations of the cross. Oh, look at there. Look throughout. The Bambino, new energies coming in, new projects coming in, a new vitality coming in, um, something young and fresh that you're going to have to nurture and care for. Uh, you got a project that becomes your baby. You got to take care of it, feed it, water it, walk it, change it, <laughs> burp it, uh, you know, tickle it. Y you got to do that in order for it to grow and to be successful. Okay. Let's uh,
Fer del Ta. Now, those two cards together say that this new energy coming in is something new, and you should try to hold to that new energy. Don't try to slide back into the old. It's always easier to go back to what we know before. Holy shit. This also speaks to, I'm just going to make this in a general sense. This speaks to someone new coming. With the dog in between, it tells me that you know the person already. If you don't know the person already, this could speak to, now, it, that's really not the interpretation in these cards. But because I'm looking at all of these major arcana cards here, and the karmic cycle, this could be a new soulmate. Now, it is a female, Lamante. Okay, whether you are this is same sex or heterosexual, whomever is going to take the role of the uh, feminine in the relationship. I think this is what the Empress has been saying all along. Because everything was centered around her, I had felt from the very beginning that this has to do with the female or feminine energy. It is definitely someone that. Um, is of some extreme significance towards your spiritual growth. Uh, now, if you are looking for someone to um, help you along your spiritual quest, I do say that you you know do your homework surrounding that person um, because not every not every healer, not every teacher. Sometimes it can do more harm than good. Um, <clears throat> it speaks to a new loyalty or a new, um, what's the word I, I'm, I'm looking for? One second. Maybe the book will give it to me because I'm not, I'm not getting it. It's not, and this is <clears throat> the shy woman <clears throat> who hides her fondness. So this could even be somebody that hasn't even really expressed to you the way that they feel. <clears throat> this is definitely the birth of something new. Let me, where's the, where's the dog? Hold on. Faithfulness, devotion, loyalty, and friendship. It will be a new devotion, loyalty, and friendship <clears throat> with this Lamante. I do feel that you already know this person. Um, remember I said somebody may have already come in that's been just a really really kind of confusing situation and I I, I also feel that it, it's not done yet um, <clears throat> let me look at this nine of wands again and then I'm going to pull a In a way, it's kind of saying that you like the way that the person looks just on a surface level. But that this person has tremendous power. 
They are an unshakable force. Um, it's been whatever this journey is, if, if you follow through on it, it's going to be a great success. Um, there may be the rubbing of uh, up against of opinions or a, what do you call it? Uh, personalities. Uh, and together, I think with this person, whether this is going to be a love relationship or even a working relationship, you really can do a lot of things together. And that eventually this person will be true, loyal, and devoted in whatever the endeavors are after coming from this deception here and feeling like someone's been holding you back. And I do feel that there has been someone, a female of some sort, um, who has been holding you back in some way, shape, or form. Um, it also speaks to the energy between the two people um, being something very positive. It's intractable. Uh, really, if you doubted it, hopefully you'll come to see at some point that it was really just your fears, subconscious fears, that prevented you from seeing the true nature of this person. That's what I'm getting. Um, let's pull one angel answer card. This went over way, uh, way more um, longer than I wanted it to. Now look. If you are a single female and you're not in a relationship, this still speaks to perhaps being deceived by one female person, but that there's somebody else, another female, who will be able to help you to do whatever it is. If you need to heal, if you need to join forces with someone, um, remember, it's the higher love. It's not always about the romantic love. It's the higher love. Um, and if you are a male, um, in one respect, I feel that for the male half of the equation, it did have to do with, uh, maybe it's like an ex, I, you know, the woman with children, the empress. She's pregnant or she, she's able to give birth to children. It's some kind of female. Um, in both instances, there's a female that's been holding someone back in many areas, perhaps, and not even really being aware of it. Um, maybe this per person has perpetrated a fraud on you in some way, shape, or form. Really, really um, injured you in the department of trust and belief and faith in the decency and the goodness of people. Um, and if it's, you know, something attached to romance, um, someone that wounded you very, very, very deeply. For some of you, this could even be like your mom. Um, and that could be why maybe you're finding that you're being attracted to the same situation or you're having the same thing happen over and over and over again. It goes all the way back to childhood and when you were your mom, uh, when you were your mom, <laughs> about your mom. Um, but there is someone, I think for some of you, it's somebody I think that you already know and uh, um, that you've already encountered, but that in order for you to see that, you're going to have to go out and find somebody else because you're trying to run away from all of this over here. You're not willing to look at it. One card. Remember I was talking about a year? A year? I keep saying it's a year. Okay, the Empress. But the card I get here is a year from now. 
Can y'all see that? Now, this is not to say that it's going to take you a whole year for this to play out. Maybe for some of you it will, but there is no timing in the tarot. You know, and that could be from last year to this year. Sometimes the cards speak in reverse timing. Um, they speak on many, many dimensions at the same time. They can speak to the past, present, and the future at the same time. I have even done readings for people where uh, the messages have come um, and they, six months down the road <laughs> from when they got the reading, they see um, that energy play out. So let me take a look and see if this angel card has anything to tell me. Well, look at there. It's a balance. It's in the balance. And once it's completed, the karma, it will be in balance. Again, that's that Jupiter and Libra energy, I'm telling you. And that's Venus and Libra. And right now, Venus and Libra has got everybody being indecisive. Sometimes during this transit, it could be you have many different options to choose from in that Seven of Cups. And, and you're indecisive about which one is which. It, it can speak to multiple relationships at the same time. Not just on a romantic level, but having maybe a lot of different business interests or a lot of different friendships. But those things are kind of coming in and throwing you off balance. Because you don't know where to focus your energy. Now let me look at this card here. A year from now. A year from now. There's like a trunk in the center here. Trunks are where you put things. Either you put things away never to look at them again, or you put things away to protect them. Um, heirlooms. But then there, the, these angels have their hands uh, towards this globe as if it's a, 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 a healing of the world. Um, I could look at that as the healing of karma, so to speak. Uh, the healing energies of the universe coming in and us trying to draw from that. Uh, if you're having trouble right now, call upon your angels, your ancestors, your guides, or simply ask the, you, ask the universe and the divine to show you the way forward. I do feel that if you get off course, things will come in and kind of course correct you back to the way you're supposed to be. Um, I don't know if this, this angel is two separate angels or one angel split into two. I don't know. But the bottom halves, their robes blend together. Uh, the poses of the two angels, one has their hands in the prayer and the other one has their... So pray for uh, enlightenment, pray for liberation, pray for something that's going to help bring in this healing energy here from the universe. All right, look, that's what I have for you. That's an hour and 14 minutes. I was not expecting to be on that long. Um, I hope the message has helped you in some way, shape, or form. Um, after all that said and done, I still didn't get the message that I needed for myself to explain the dream that I had. Um, that's just the way it works sometimes. I do readings six days a week. Um, my turnaround time is between 48 to 72 hours. I offer Akashic Records readings. Uh, that's, you know, taking a look at what's going on. It can help you identify why you keep making the same mistakes or why things seem to be stuck or why you keep attracting the same relationship or why people keep treating you the same. Um, I have etheric cord cutting. Sometimes you need to just cut the energy from people. 
It doesn't mean you break up or you stop being friends or you don't care about the person anymore. It just allows you to disconnect so that you can get back into your own healthy energy. And that way you're able to look at things a little bit more objectively. Um, I ask if you want to book a reading with me that you please read the important information on booking before doing so. If this is for uh, video readings and phone readings, I offer both of those. Um, you can go over, join, uh, sign up to my website. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr. So until next time, everybody. Oh, and don't forget, time goes back an hour tomorrow. Might even be tonight. Hell, I don't know. <laughs> so don't forget that, okay? For all of us uh, that uh, live in the, what is it, daylight savings time thing. I think Arizona doesn't do it, and there's one other state. But anyway, the time goes back an hour. I think tonight at either 2 a.m., Sunday morning, 2 a.m., something like that. So don't forget to set your clocks back. Don't want you to be lit. Be late on Monday. Hell, it might even be Sunday. I don't know. Well, 2 a.m. is Sunday, ain't it? Anyway, don't want you to be late Monday morning. So there you have it. Until next time, namaste.